So for this, uh, uh, it's common to use the editor that comes in the interface. So we'll write a script in MATLAB. Okay, I'm going to start typing here. So we're ready to start uh, typing uh, the little program. So, so, so if you remember the communication system, bits are going to get generated. They're going to go through this BPSK mapper, zero to plus one, one to minus one, uh, and then uh, we're going to have uh, uh, noise getting added, and then the receiver does a thresholding at zero. Right. So that's the simple system. Uh, but to make theoretical plot, you just need to evaluate the Q function. Right. So you don't need anything more uh, beyond that. So let's say. Uh, let us say for the first conversion is for uh, rate and EB over N0 and all that. So the way I usually like to write my code is to first define EB over N0 in dB. Okay? So this could be let us say 4 dB okay? and then uh, the rate, okay? the rate is 1. Okay? So how did I get these two things? EB over N0 could be anything else. You just have to fix that. You can change it to any other number. Okay? The rate is 1 because I am doing uncoded BPSK. Okay, so this is one bit per symbol. Okay. So tomorrow, if you do coding, uh, we might change this parameter r, but for now, r is one. Okay. So once you do this, I know my formula for EB over n naught. EB over n naught is one by two r sigma squared. So from that formula, I can find what sigma should be. So for that, it's useful to first convert EB over n naught to uh, from dB to actual value. Okay. So maybe I'll write a quick uh, little description here, and then uh, show you how that works. Okay. So E B over N naught is one by two R sigma squared. So sigma is square root of one by two R times E B over N naught. Now remember, we're going to have E B over N naught in D B. So E B over N naught is actually 10 power E B over N naught in D B divided by 10, right? So if you have E B over N naught in D B, you divide it by 10, raise it to the power 10, you will get E B over N naught, okay? So you can plug that back in, okay? So if you, if you do that, you will get the value for sigma, okay? So from E B over N naught in D B, Right? So, which is 4 or 5 or something, we can go to sigma. Sigma is the noise variance of uh, the noise that you add. Okay? So, this little formula uh, one, needs to, uh, one needs to do. You can do it in multiple ways. It is uh, depending on your taste and uh, how you like to program. So, maybe I will write like this. I will do an explicit conversion from EB over N0 to EB. 10 power EB N0 DB by 10. 10. And then uh, you can do sigma equals sqrt 1 by 2 by r by, uh, if you do not like this, you can write 2 into r into eb n0. Okay? So that gives you the value for sigma. So this is uh, uh, most of the battle done. Okay? So all these are useful uh, conversions. We should do that in the beginning. So some sort of a setup for either the simulation or the theoretical uh, plot that you might have. Okay? So now if you remember the, the value for uh, bit error rate as a function of uh, value for bit error rate as a function of E B over N0 is given by this formula. right? It is just Q of square root of uh, 2 times E B over N0. Right? So once I have E B over N0, I just have to plug it into this and get my uh, value for bit error rate. Uh, but I know my Q is uh, implemented as 0.5 ERFC of x by root 2. So if I combine those two, I will get my uh, value. Okay? So let me just write that down once again. Okay? So BR is Q of square root of 2 times EB over N0. Okay? And what is Q? Q is 0.5 ERFC of whatever is inside the argument of q, you have to divide by root 2. So, this root 2 will cancel. So, you simply get E B over N0. Okay? So, this is a little formula that one might want to remember. And uh, let us type that in to my MATLAB code. Okay. I think that is the one. No. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. I'm getting spun around here. Ah, there it is. Okay. So, how do I find a bit error rate? Bit error rate theory. Okay. This is the theoretical formula is 0 0.5 times ERFC of uh, SQRT of EB naught. That is it. Okay. So, we can do a little display here, display E B N O D B and B R T H. Okay, so, this will just show you uh, what the two values are and let us uh, try to run this. So, if you run it, you might have to save it. So, let us save it. I am going to save it into uh, my folder that is available here. Let me make a little subfolder here. Maybe that's not easy to do, so I'll just I'll just leave it in this folder itself. Okay, so the title I'll give as uh, oops, oops, here. I'll just call it BPSK sim. Okay, so that's just a file we have, and now we're ready to run it. And to run it, maybe we should. Uh, run it from the command line. You can also run it from the, uh, from the thing, but let us run it from the command line. Uh, D colon, I forget the, oops, yeah, there it is. There it is. We can check what is in the directory. Oh, I need to go into this 20 dot directory. Okay, so you can see my program BPSK sim uh, dot m. We can try to run it. Let us see if there are any errors. There are no errors. And as expected, uh, if you remember 4 dB in the plot gave you around 10 power minus 2. And you can see that that is uh, panning out here. 4 dB is 10 power minus 2. So maybe we should check on uh, uh, the theoretical plot for uh, let us say 6 dB. 6 dB is around uh, uh, 2 to 3. So let us say 2.5 into 10 power minus 3, right. So that is the plot. So that is, let us see if that comes about in our uh, BPSK sim. So if I want 6 dB, I have to go back to my editor and change uh, the eb over n0 to 6 db and then save it. You can come back to the command window and then run it again. You will get 2.4 into 10 power minus 3. So, that is uh, close enough and that is how I generated this plot. So, if you want to for instance, uh, get all these numbers together you can make some simple modifications to the to the editor you can you can make the eb and not db as a vector and maybe you might want to make some small changes here and there uh, to make that work out but this is a very basic uh, piece of code to do that okay so now how do i verify the ber theoretical with the ber simulation okay so if you remember i had mentioned you can write some uh, simulation to actually transmit the messages, count the number of errors and divide by the total number of uh, bits sent to find the bit error rate. Uh, Let us do that next and then compare the two. Okay. So, for that I need to know how many bits I am going to send. Let me fix it at uh, 10,000. Okay. So, it is some number you can play around with, you can change it if you like. And then uh, first I will need the message vector. Okay. So, I will need uh, to generate 10,000 bits of message because it is a rate 1 uncoded BPSK. Uh, to generate random uh, uh, random uh, bits, uh, the current uh, code in MATLAB is to use this command called rand i. Uh, so, so I am going to do that uh, for the message rand i uh, 0 Okay, it's not right. zero, one, comma one, comma n. So this will generate for me a string of random binary 
uh, 0 and 1 values uh, of length n, a vector of length n of, uh, of this. Uh, so, I will illustrate this a little bit before I run it, but let me finish up my coding and then you can go back and see it. So, now I need to know, uh, so this is uh, number of uh, bits of message. This is uh, generate a random message. And the next thing I do, I have to do BPSK, right? So, I have to take my message to uh, plus 1 and minus 1. Every time I have a 0 in the message, it should become plus 1, 1 should become minus 1. Uh, there is usually a little device uh, that I use. Uh, so, let us call it S. S is 1 minus 2 into MSG. Okay, so this is uh, BPSK bit to symbol conversion. Okay, so you can check what it does. If if MSG is zero, I'm going to get plus one. If MSG is one, I'm going to get minus one. Okay, so this is a quick and uh, dirty way to convert uh, this BPSK uh, modulation into a simple MATLAB line of code. Okay, so I have my symbol vector. Now I need my received vector R. Okay, so that is the transmission. The R is going to be S plus Gaussian noise, Gaussian noise with uh, sigma as the standard deviation. So, uh, MATLAB has this uh, little utility called RAND N which will generate Gaussian distributed random variables and how many of them do I want? N of them, okay. So, this will generate N, RAND N generates uh, unit variance uh, distribution uh, values from that distribution. So, you multiply by sigma to get uh, variance of sigma square. okay. So, this is R and then now you can run your thresholding device. So, this is uh, AWGN channel and then now we have to do a thresholding, right. So, if R is greater than 0, I am going to say the transmitted uh, message bit was, uh, was uh, transmitted symbol was plus 1 or the transmitted message bit was 0, okay. And if R is less than 0, I am going to say the transmitted symbol was minus 1 and the transmitted message was 1, okay. So, the way to again do this very uh, 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 easily, the message cap which is m cap which is what is uh, decided on the other side is uh, to simply say r less than 0, okay. So, this is the threshold, okay. So, what will happen here is whenever r is negative, this condition is true. And uh, true means 1 in uh, as a number, if you want to compare it as a number, true means 1, okay. And if R is positive, this condition is false and false is 0, okay. So, this quickly does a thresholding at 0 and gives you the bit that you want, okay. So, I have a message and a message cap and now I can compare message and message cap. Message is what I sent, message cap is what I have received. So, I can compare and how do I compare? Comparing is uh, not too bad. Uh, you can do it in multiple ways, but one can get a BR sim from the comparison, okay. So, uh, I am going to see if MSG is not equal to MSG cap, okay. So, this will generate wherever they are not equal, it will generate a 1, wherever it is equal, it generate a 0. So, you can add it all up. This will give you the number of errors and you divide by n, this will give you the error rate, okay. So, so for, so when, whenever you do Monte Carlo simulations like this, it is good actually to have the number of errors uh, separately stored. So, you, you might want to have that also. I will tell you why you need this. So, let us store that in one variable and then divide to get the error rate, okay. And when you display, it is good to display BR sim and the number of errors and the n, okay. So, in one shot, you get a glimpse of what has happened, the EB over n out in db, the BER theoretical, uh, the BER that you got from simulation, n errors and n, okay. So, this is my little code, uh, let me save this, okay. So, this does simulation and theory. Uh, what I am also going to do is show you some of these commands just to give you a sense of uh, how they work, okay. So, let us go to the MATLAB command window 
so I showed you this code rand i. So, so rand i, let me call it m, rand i of let's say 0, 1 and then 1 comma, so just for illustration we will use some 8. Okay. So, you can see it generated a random bit. If you run it again, it will generate another random bit, a six sequence of random bits. You can keep changing this. Uh, every iteration will be different, etc. So, this produces a random number generator. Okay. So, just a, it has a sequence like this. Okay. So, now once I do that, I can transmit my uh, BPSK conversion work like that, right. So, you can see how this is working 1 goes to minus 1, 0 goes to plus 1. Okay. And then we have the noise getting added. Maybe I should show you the noise separately. The normal, so this is normally distributed random variables. You can keep changing that, it will change. This is all variance 1. So if you want to see sigma squared, so you have to multiply by sigma. Okay, so this is noise like that. Okay, so I wanted to get r is s plus this okay and this is r okay and uh, so if you remember i had this m cap which is uh, so so you can see what has happened okay just just for comparison maybe you need to see s and then this okay so you see minus 1 was transmitted minus 0.92 is received minus 1 was transmitted minus 1.4 is received minus 1 was transmitted minus 1.4 is received so on okay so that's the corresponding numbers that were received uh, so now uh, we had this m cap which is r less than 0 and you can see that goes back to the bits okay so you can compare with m you have the exact same uh, m that was transmitted okay so this r less than 0 is a convenient device for bpsk is that okay so we did this for a very small uh, case and if you now i'm going to run my bpsk sim if you remember that was for a S and EB over N naught of uh, 6 dB and then uh, we are expecting uh, 2.4 into 10 power minus 3 as the bit error rate. I was doing 10,000 uh, uh, bit simulation. Let us see what we get. Okay, sorry, I put some. Okay, so now the display is not uh, that great. So maybe we should do a format short G which will make it a little bit better. And maybe we should get all of these guys in the same line. So let us move this around. So there you go. So, so the this is EB over N0, 6 dB. This is the theoretical bit error rate expected, 2.3 into 10 power minus 3. Okay, it has so many accuracy. And then 0 0.003 is what I got in simulation. There were 30 errors out of 10,000. Okay, so you can see there is uh, not an exact match, but close enough. Uh, but this kind of 30 is, a, is maybe not a very significant number. Uh, so what you can do if you want maybe better accuracy is to modify this n. You run for a larger number. Okay, so you run it for 100,000. Let's say. Okay, this computer is uh, quite powerful, and this program is very simple. It has enough memory. So 100,000 is not a big deal. But if you have a very small computer with uh, not too much memory then you might have to think about how uh, how much you can run it for but you can usually run 100,000 uh, very easily and you can see the accuracy sort of improves it comes closer to points uh, 2 and then you can do more simulations if you like some some values will be closer it's around 0 0.002 okay so now uh, the reason why this number of times you repeat the thing is very important is supposing i run it only 100 times okay so what will happen is if you run it only 100 times, this will keep giving you a number which you cannot trust. Okay, So, you see it gives you, gives you 0 0.01, sometimes it gives you 0, Okay, the 0 or 1 error while the prediction is 0 0.002. So, that is why the number of errors you get in your simulation is very important. So, typically when I run simulations, I like to simulate for as many blocks as needed so that the number of errors is at least 100. Okay, So, in your simulation that is always a good number to keep in mind. Uh, if you do that, usually it is very good. So, that is why uh, if you see, if you make it uh, 100,000 okay, or 1 lakh as we call it here, it usually is uh, is pretty good for this for this EB over N0, okay, for the EB over N0 of 6. 
for the EB over N0 of 6. Okay. Now, uh, if I change this EB over N0 to 10.5 for instance, okay, notice what happens. And if I run this, okay, so 10.5 EB over N0, I know my bit error rate is going to be around 10 power minus 6 and you can see the problem here. It goes to 0, right? 10 power minus 6 bit error rate, you are simulating only 10 power 5 and you are getting 0. So, what should you do? You should do something slightly smarter and for that, uh, it is usually good not to keep increasing n. So, of course, you can keep increasing n to some 10 power something, but that is not very nice because the reason is this, uh, this is using storage of n. Okay? So, this works for small n, for large n this is not going to work very well. So, what you can do is you can make a loop, okay? you can make a loop and have a cumulative uh, uh, n. So, uh, that is also a very uh, nice thing to do. So, maybe you want to keep your n as 1000. Okay, number of bits of message per block. Okay, so you repeat the block multiple times. Okay, so how many times do you want to repeat? For i equals one colon, let's say hundred. Okay, and then uh, you have to end this somewhere here. Okay, it's still not ready to finish this. So, so you you repeat in blocks of uh, 1000 a 100 times. Okay? So, this way your memory is not very high. Okay? Your memory every time you create these vectors, you are only creating length 1000 vectors, but you are repeating it 100 times. So, you do not need too much memory and you can still overall simulate for a very large number. But here it needs a little bit of uh, careful work here. So, what you should do is you should have this n errors which is equal to 0 in the beginning and you have to keep adding it up here. Is that okay? And finally, when you divide, uh, so what I like to do usually is uh, I also like to have a variable called n blocks, which is 100, and then I put n blocks here, okay, and then I divide by n, I further divide by n blocks to get my overall BR sim. So, this way, I, the, my simulation will be a little slower because it is doing a loop, and loops are not that fast in MATLAB, but I am not using so much storage and I can increase my n blocks to as high a level as I like. Okay? So, for instance, I might make my n block as 10,000. Okay? So, now overall I will be simulating uh, 10 power 8 bits, but I will be using only a memory of 1000 at a time. Okay? So, this will not be very slow in at least in this computer, I believe this will run pretty fast. Let us uh, and then I am, if you look at it, I am counting my total errors, right? I am initially my number of errors is 0. And for every block, I keep on adding the number of errors that I get. Finally, I divide by n, the number of bits in per block and number of blocks also. So, overall, uh, this is a valid way to do my simulation. So, let us go and run this now. So, you see it took a little bit of time, uh, but it was printing it as n. Uh, so, maybe I should change what I am printing here to n into n blocks. to show you how many bits are being simulated. Let us go back and run it again. It was pretty fast. So, it is not too bad these days. So, 1.08. Uh, still, the number of errors is only 12. So, maybe you want to increase the block further. It was not too slow. So, maybe we put it, put one more 0 there. Uh, so, that way, now we should get enough uh, behavior. Uh, so, now you notice the delay. There is a little bit more of delay, but still finally, you get the answer. It comes pretty good. Uh, 10 power minus 6 is the bit error rate you expect at 10.5 dB. Uh, you got 111 errors out of 10 power 8 transmissions. So, there was a lot of transmissions were needed uh, to generate the errors, but you did get 111 errors and, uh, and you got a bit error rate simulation of 1.11 into 10 power minus 6. So, this is a basic setup uh, in the BPSK simulation. Okay? So, now uh, like I mentioned, we will keep this with us throughout. So, we will uh, keep many of many elements in this, this uh, thing of n blocks and repeating over a block, generating a message, converting it into BPSK, sending it over. Uh, but except before, after the message is generated, we will put in our coding block here. Okay, where will the coding block come? Encoding will come here. And then before you uh, do this threshold, you will not do the threshold, you will do a decoding here. 
here we will introduce some code for encoding and decoding and you can simulate uh, error control code as well. And now you have to modify a lot of things, right? So you have to modify rate here for coding, you have to modify all of that and then we can see how, uh, how this works, okay? So we will, we will do this as we go along but uh, this is the simulation. So what I am going to try and do is uh, show you uh, maybe a comparison on how, how easily uh, will this uh, same program run on Octave. So let us try that. It is uh, usually pretty good but uh, personally I, I use uh, MATLAB because we do have a license for MATLAB. We have not had a reason to. So I am going to open the uh, file that we had. on Octave, it seems to have opened. Uh, so let us not uh, try the very ambitious version, we will try 6 dB and we will try uh, number of blocks is uh, 100, let us say, okay. So let me save this and let me, uh, here also I should uh, go to that. Okay, it doesn't seem to like it. Okay. Okay, so now we are on. Uh, so let us run this BPS case in here. So it ran pretty fast, you saw that it gave you 244.00024, uh, so maybe we can also run 10.5, then we needed uh, 10 power 8, right? Okay, so this will give you 10 power 8, so let's save it, go to the command window and then run again, takes a little bit of time. Okay, but it is uh, managed to finish as well. Uh, you can see uh, there were 116 errors this time uh, and then the bit error rate uh, theoretical and bit error rate uh, practical, uh, the simulation one agree in Octave as well, okay. So, so this is uh, sort of true generally, you can write in MATLAB and then the code more or less works with very little uh, uh, change in Octave as well. But remember I was using just basic commands, I was not using any advanced uh, package based uh, MATLAB commands, usually you do not have to, these kind of commands are uh, pretty good as well, okay. So that is the end of this lecture, hopefully you have learnt uh, uh, enough from this. Uh, you will be expected to at least, so this code will be made available to you, you can take it and then you will be expected to run it, produce some results and then answer some assignments based on that, okay. So we will uh, expect that you can do this. Uh, uh, so that is the end of this lecture. So in the next lecture, I will start talking a little bit more about uh, uh, error control codes, how to build encoders for them, how to build decoders for them and then uh, we will have to write some code for doing encoding and decoding. We will do that after we learn about error control codes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.